All right, so do you think you learned enough math to be able to solve this math word problem? Well, hopefully you did. And uh, actually, I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you out there watching this video took the math courses required in order to solve this problem. This is not that difficult, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the question. It is the following. Plane A has 100 more seats than plane B. Together, they have 600 seats. How many seats does each plane have? All right, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step exactly how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is our problem. Let me go ahead and read it before I show you the answer. So we have two planes. We have plane A and plane B. So plane A has 100 more seats than plane B. Together, these planes have 600 seats. How many seats does each plane have? All right, now before I show you the answer, um, I did indicate that I think most of you out there should have the math skills to solve this problem. And this particular problem, uh, really what I'm gonna be using is like first year algebra. So hopefully you have taken some algebra. Now, if you haven't had a chance to study algebra, well, don't feel bad about um, not knowing the answer. Maybe you figured this out in a different way. But uh, most people out there, if you completed high school or whatnot, you have taken at least some algebra. Of course, most of us probably forgot this stuff, but let's take a look at the right answer. So the correct answer is the following. Plane A has 350 seats and plane B has 250 seats. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. And if you figure this out without using algebra, well, that is super impressive, all right? So great job. And if some of you are out there saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, I totally forgot this because the last time I was studying algebra was 1973 or something like that. Well, listen, I don't expect you to remember everything that you learn in terms of math, but this is not that difficult. And hopefully some of this stuff comes back to you as I go through the solution. All right, so here is the problem. And once again, we do have a math word problem. So you always want to use something called the rule of three. This is my rule. And that is uh, read the problem at least three times before you start uh, to do anything. Now, even if you understand the problem the first time out, you're like, yes, yes, I get the problem. Uh, you know, if you rush, you know, trying to solve this thing, and this is typically what happens, people go, oh, here's the problem. I have no time to waste because I got to, you know, turn in my quiz or I got to get on to the next problem. They'll just take off in a certain direction. And then I'll be like, wait a minute, I'm lost. I'm, <laughs> this is not the right way to go. So then come back, read the problem again, and I'll be like, oh, wait a minute, this is a better way to solve the problem. That's a pretty typical uh, thing that happens to uh, students or people that are studying math. So I just kind of learned a long time ago that it's best to be patient, all right? Even if you're taking a timed math exam, be patient, uh, you know, think about the material, think about the question, and then kind of go from there. All right, so we do have these two planes, and uh, what we want to do here is figure out what the question is. So we have uh, these two planes, and we want to know how many seats does each plane have. So we have over here like plane A, and then over here we have plane B. So we want to uh, think of this in terms of variables, right? So maybe A represents the amount of seats that plane A has, and B can represent the amount of seats that plane B um, uh, B has. Now, if you're saying, hey, well, I don't want to solve it that way, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's perfectly fine if you took another route, as long as you can kind of um, clearly uh, justify your results, you know, someone can read your work and understand it, then that's perfectly fine. But this is a perfect example of uh, where algebra is so awesome, right? So I'm gonna use two variables to represent what we're looking for, okay? So how many seats does each plane um, have? Well, A can represent the number of seats that plane A has, and B, the variable B, will represent the number of um, 
seats that plane B has. So let's go ahead and uh, actually specify that. And this is the way you want to do this when you're actually doing an algebra word problem. So we're going to let A equal the number of seats that plane A has and let B equal the number of seats that plane B has. Now, even though you understand your variables here, uh, you really have to delineate them and be like, okay, here's specifically what A is equal to, and here is what B represents as well. All right, so these are the things, kind of like the habits that you want to get um, used to doing when you are solving an algebra word problem. Okay, so we have these two variables, A and B. So what can we do here? Well, this is where our algebra skills are going to come into play. And as I indicated, if you've taken like first year algebra, you should have remembered something called systems, all right? So systems of linear equations, that's what we're gonna need here because how many uh, variables are we trying to solve for? We're trying to solve for two, A and B. Now, if you remember things that look like this, X plus Y is equal to three, and x minus y is equal to 10, something like this, these type of problems. This is an example of a system of linear equations. Now let's just notice something here. We have two variables, x and y, that we're trying to solve for, and we have two equations, this one and this one. So as a general rule in algebra, the number of variables that you're trying to solve for um, uh, is equal to the number of equations that you're going to need to solve for those variables, right? So for example, if I'm trying to solve for both X and Y, I'm going to need two equations in X and Y. Again, like X plus two Y is equal to seven and X minus Y is equal to 11. Here is two equations in X and Y because I have two variables. Now, if I only had one variable, well then I only need one equation. I'll give you a simple example right now. So if I have like two X minus three is equal to seven, well, I only have one variable here, and all I need is one equation. All right, so when I kind of go through these solutions in um, my little videos here, I try to make sure that you understand the big picture in terms of um, you know the math that's going on. All right, so we have two variables, A and B. So to solve for these variables, we're going to need some equations, but how many equations are we gonna need? We're gonna need two, and we can build these two equations by using the information in the problem. All right, so now that you know what the variables are, see if you can come up with two equations that represents this additional information right here. So plane A has 100 more seats than plane B. Together, they have 600 seats. Well, this one should be pretty easy, right? So uh, let's just think about this for a second. Well, together, these planes have 600 seats, so maybe we can be like, well, A plus B, these are the number of seats in each uh, plane, well, that's gonna be equal to 600. Well, that is one equation in our lovely system. And then we have this other piece of information that plane A has 100 more seats than plane B. We can uh, use that as well. So let's go and take a look at this one. So plane A has 100 more seats than plane B. All right, so this is one equation in our system, and the other is A plus B is equal to 600, right? So both um, planes together have a total of 600 seats, and now we have a lovely two-variable linear equa or sorry, two-variable linear system. Okay, so we're talking about systems, and this is even taught uh, in even some pre-algebra courses. All right, so how do we solve for A and B? Well, you wanna be thinking about uh, certain uh, tools that you learn to solve linear systems. I'll give you a couple of quick hints here. So you're talking about like the substitution method or the elimination linear combination method. These are things that you're taught in basic algebra. All right, so even if you didn't know how to set up this uh, word problem, well, let's see if you can actually solve uh, for A and B given these two uh, equations. All right, so this is our system. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so the easiest thing to do here is to use the substitution method. So we have A plus B is equal to 600. Well, A is equal to B plus 100, right? So these are our two uh, equations in our system. So we can replace this A with uh, B plus 100, right? Because A is equal to B plus 100. So I can substitute this right here for this A. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, when I substitute this A for B plus 100, I'm going to end up with one equation 
in one variable b okay and of course i can solve for that so let's go ahead and take a look at this right now all right so a plus b is equal to 600 we're going to replace this a because we know that a is equal to b plus 100 so we're going to replace a with b plus 100 and then we're going to solve this for b all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the simple algebra so b plus 100 plus b is equal to 600 so we have uh, like terms here b and b so we have 2b plus 100 is equal to 600 now i'm going to go ahead and subtract 100 from both sides of the equation so you're going to have 2b is equal to 500 so to solve for b all i have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2 so b is equal to 250. All right, so we're almost there. So now that we know what B is equal to 250, well, it should be hopefully somewhat obvious that uh, we can figure out what A is equal to by using either one of these equations. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I have two words in my vocabulary. Hopefully you have them as well. Uh, and the first is help right so yes indeed we all need help uh, from time to time and a lot of different things in life and the second one is goals okay now i have a goal my goal is to reach as many people as i possibly can and help them with math okay well in life um we can we kind of figure out what we are good at and what we're kind of passionate about and you know over the decades you know i've just immersed myself in trying to be the best math teacher that i possibly can and try to make math easy to understand and interesting. So I've really tried to improve, and I, that is my goal, and it's an ongoing goal. And uh, you know, the whole idea behind you know my passion is to help as many people as possible because I have seen through the decades a lot of people just really get down on themselves because they think you know there's something wrong with them if they don't understand algebra, if they don't understand trigonometry, and it's very detrimental to their you know their thinking. You know, they're like I'm too. I'm not smart enough to learn math. They say a lot of negative things, okay? And what I want to do is try to interrupt that pattern of thinking. So if you want to be successful in mathematics, you absolutely can. And you need to find uh, a math teacher that can, you know, uh, really inspire you to continue to learn. Never, ever give up and never believe someone that says, you know, hey, you can't, uh, you know, learn math. You're not, you know, capable of doing that. And the number one uh, person that tells us this, uh, these type of th uh, things about ourselves is us, right? So we have to be very careful with our thoughts. Anyways, that's what my channel is all about, really trying to inspire people not to give up on math. But uh, to reach my goal, I need your help, right? So you may need help in math. Get the help that you need. Don't just struggle. You know, watch my videos if you like my teaching style. If you really want to learn from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And what we're talking about here is basic algebra. So you can check out any one of the following courses, pre-algebra, algebra one, or my math skills rebuilder course. I'll teach you systems and much, much more. But uh, anyways, you know, find help, okay? Find someone that you like and understand in terms of uh, mathematics, but just don't give up, all right? But I need your help to get this message out. So hit that subscribe button and that uh, notification bell so you can get my latest videos. All right, so really not much to do here because we already figured out what one uh, variable is equal to, right? So B is equal to 250. So how can we solve for A? Well, if you're saying it must be to math, man, you know, we can just simply replace this B. We know that it's equal to 250. Replace that B for two, with uh, 250 and figure out what A is. Well, that is precisely what I'm going to do. So A is going to be equal to B plus 100. Now we already know that B is equal to 250. So 250 plus 100 is 350. So A is equal to 350. But uh, once again, what is A and B? Well, these are the amount of seats in each plane, right? So plane A has 350 seats and plane B has 250 seats. All right, so never feel bad, you know, if you um, didn't get a, pro a math problem uh, right. It's all about learning. Now, another thing that happens with a lot of students and a lot of people learning math is they get overconfident. They're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I can solve all your uh, problems. Well, maybe you can, but maybe you can't. This is very much like the analogy of, uh, well, the one I like to use is like basketball, right? So let's say you want to get good at basketball. If you shoot the basketball and you make it in one time, uh, will you get every single shot, uh, you know, in every single time? Well, no, right? So the only way you're going to get better is to challenge yourself, you know, go over here, try to make some baskets, you know, try to take more 
difficult uh, shots. And it's the same thing in math. You got to practice, practice, practice. You know, practice easy problems. Practice the uh, you know mid range problems. And then you know try to figure out and solve very difficult math problems. The more you practice, the better you're going to be because math is a skill. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.